I feel like because of the way I got into this whole ministry, it was sort of backwards. I said, Lord, use me, and then he found the place to use me. I didn't realize that I was going to fall in love with women in prison. I've been a Christian since I was a teenager, and my dream in life was to be a stay-at-home mom. And after the boys left home, I began to want to do more. And because of what our church was teaching, because of uh, the GLS conference out of Willow Creek Church, I became very interested in um, volunteering in my community, being a part of reaching out to the community, not just talking about Jesus, but to, to do something practical so that they could see uh, the love of Jesus in a practical way. With an off chance comment, somebody said you can donate your craft, extra craft things to some place and they go and do crafts in the prison. And I said, crafts in the prison? If I were in prison, I would want to do crafts in the prison. And so that's what I started looking for. there weren't any crafts in the prison at the time and uh, so I began a journey of talking with whoever I could talk to about some ideas and I got a hold of a CO that says yes the warden is looking for new ideas and come in and talk to me. I had this little doll project that was easy to do and it could be done by hand so I took it with me and she liked the idea and that began the process of starting uh, what we call Dolls for Charity in the women's prison. So we came up with the, the idea of these little dolls. What's nice about them is they're easy to make. You can make them by hand rather than using a machine and at any skill level can make them and they're really cute. And so the women make these dolls to give to their own children and then we give the rest to charity. Everybody, everybody wants to love. The program has made the women remember, a lot of the women remember that they're women. It's something that they don't have to think about their past. They don't have to think about why they're there. It has made them uh, feel like they're part of society again, that there's dignity. At the beginning, people were, the women were really like, why are you here? And we convinced them we were just there because we cared about them. We wanted to bring something in that they could sit in a room and just be women. They could just be women sewing. I began to pray to God a couple of years ago. Oh, Lord, it would be so nice to spend more time. And I just said, Lord, you know, I'll spend as much time as you'll give me in the prison if you make a way for me to go. And a couple of months ago, they offered, came up to me and offered out of the blue for me to become chaplain. It's a matter of realizing that every person is valuable. And if you're just willing to do what's in front of you, what God puts in front of you, um, instead of deciding, oh, I have to have this tremendous, huge ministry, instead it's a matter of what can I do right in front of me with the gifting I have. Everybody, everybody wants to love. Everybody, everybody wants to be loved. Love. This whole thing, for over, it's gone over five years that now I've become chaplain, but it was taking little bitty steps and being content to take that step and not worry about where it was going to take me and then not to be content to stay there but to move on but not be worried that it was a big step or a little step it's just doing the next logical thing we get in this idea that all we need to do is bring jesus to people and that everything's all set and this is not the case and so uh it's been a daily dance with them and realizing that the first part is treating them as valuable to God, treating them and, and more than telling them about what God, how God wants you to act and respond, but living it before them and treating them with, with love and compassion without making them projects. Oh, 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 oh.